and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to thereasonswesmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is episode 669. Congratulations to the Buckeyes for beating Red Cruz last night. And congratulations to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for winning the election. There was a lot of celebrating going on yesterday, which was... Uh, pretty cool. So I'm hoping that everybody's going to come together and we're going to move forward in a positive way and, and that uh, old wounds will heal, we hope, and that uh, uh, in the same vein that we get the coronavirus under control and, and we don't kill the economy doing it, <laughs> if that stuff, because that stuff costs, costs a lot of money. So before we get started, I want to um, mention, the, last week we had Sean Carpenter from Polonix on, and he's my IT guy, and I want to thank him because he is here and his... Um, Co-worker Seth is on the phone or was on the phone helping make sure the Facebook works, the Facebook Live, and uh, we're hoping that it works, but I want to thank Sean for doing that, and I want to, Sean, tell people how they can reach you if they want to use you for their IT. They can give us a call, 614-695-6700. Okay, and then is there a website they could also go to, or you just want them to call? Yeah, polonix.com, either or. Don't know. Polonix, P-A-L-O-N-I-X.com, which means nothing. It sounds really technical, but it means nothing, right? <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that again. <laughs> I thought it was a secret capacitor, but it's not. Anyway, but hey, people remember it because I said it means nothing. Polonix. No, that's cool. That sounds perfect. It's like I thought I was, I was the one that was missing something. Okay, so if you guys are watching on Facebook, it's thanks to Sean Carpenter and Polonix. Okay, before we get started, I want to remind people if you... Uh, would like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko, and if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Uh, as we mentioned, we're uh, broadcasting on Facebook, so it's Dr. Kavitko and Associates if you want to go there. All past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Okay, in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. Uh, the number to call, 614-459-9769. Don't call now, but uh, when, when it's time... 614-459-9769. Okay, so today's show, our topic is 10 reasons primarily millennials avoid going to the dentist. A lot of people avoid going to the dentist. It's not just millennials. But as it turns out, millennials, a study found that of 2,000 surveyed, 2,000 people surveyed, the average person had gone more than two days without brushing their teeth. Millennials were found to be the most afraid to go to the dentist. I had no idea people went days without brushing their teeth. I really didn't. I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, it said that 30% uh, of millennials brush their teeth just once a day. And by the way, I got this information from what's called Becker's Dental Review. So, and you might want to remember this information because it'll be Dr. Kavitko's question of the day uh, as we move forward in the show. So let's talk about that. And um, there are... Becker's put together their top 10 reasons that people avoid the dentist. And what we're going to do today is we're going to compare. There are lots of lists, five reasons why people are scared of the dentist. This one is, what are the, some of the well, most well-known fears? Five common dental phobias plus practical solutions. Um, anyway, what I was looking for is what are the primary reasons why people are afraid of the dentist? I think I know most of them, but I thought I would, uh, we'll go over these different reports, these different lists that people have put together. So according to Becker's Dental Review, uh, their top 10 reasons people avoid the dentist are, number one, fear of painful treatment. Fear that the treatment is going to hurt. That makes sense. Here's one that I hadn't thought about. Fear of pain after the treatment. And that's a good one because, yeah, you're going in, you're having work done. It could be an extraction. It could be a root canal. It could be gum surgery. 
could even be a filling. And, you know, to do a filling, we have to uh, obviously drill on the tooth. We have to use our scalers, and we have to use our spoon excavators, and we have to uh, sometimes put a clamp on the tooth, which can irritate the gum a little bit. Lots of things. And so, yeah, there can be discomfort after an appointment, even one that I might not necessarily feel requires pain medication. Because typically, when we're talking about giving people a prescription for pain medicine, we're thinking of the uh, more involved things, like the root canals and the extractions and the, and the crowns. But yeah, just from a filling, you could wind up with soreness. In fact, I had a woman who had, we did a crown, and uh, also we did a, a filling before the crown, and she came back a few days later, and she could barely open her mouth. Barely open her mouth to put her, like your finger would barely fit in there. And she was having to, like, get baby food and shove anything that would fit. Well, that doesn't happen to everybody. It does happen to some. And it's caused from inflammation. It's caused from tissue injury. So whenever we numb a person, the needle causes a little bit of injury. When it goes in, uh, that has to be repaired. And the first cells that are formed are fibrous. They don't stretch. There, are, there is no elastin in them. And so it takes time for the elastin cells to grow back in and before the person can open their jaw properly. So I can understand uh, this one, which is fear of pain after treatment, or in this case, uh, maybe fear of not being able to open your mouth wide enough <laughs> because that's what happens. Maybe that makes that number 11. So number three on Becker's dental review list was the noise of the dental drill. And there's been talk about, boy, couldn't we potentially come up with a quiet dental drill, a silent dental drill. And you know, anytime you have air moving, it makes a sound. So in order, like a, think of a jet engine, air in and air out, it's noisy. Think of a car without a muffler. The air goes in and straight out, uh, it's noisy. Air moving creates noise. And so we'll never, with an air turbine like dental drills are, we'll never be able to make it silent. So then you think about things like uh, the laser. My Soleil laser. Light doesn't make a sound, right? Although, think about this. I like to point this out to people. You notice your turn signal? When you put your turn signal on, it blinks. It, it beeps. Click, 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 right? What's doing that? Light doesn't make a sound. <laughs> really, all it is is, to be honest, there's this little, um, there's this little magnetic switch that draws this little uh, metal thing from one side to the other, and it clicks when it touches. But that's done on purpose, so we know when our turn signal is still on. We hear the clicking sound, and we know our turn signal is on. But light doesn't make a sound. So why does the uh, laser make noise? Well, the lasers make noise uh, because they have to have water, and there has to be a pump to pump the water. And to be honest, my Soleil laser is more noisy than the dental drill, even though light makes no sound. Or, yeah, it makes no sound. Okay. Negative past experiences. We've talked about this a lot and how... You know, I've tried my best to make sure my patients don't have negative past experiences, but that, and that when I graduated from dental school and I would hear these stories about how people had been hurt, I thought then, and I wish I could say I still think now, but I don't, uh, that all of that happened, you know, 30 years ago, and now we're talking 1980, by the way, so it would have been in 1950, somewhere that wasn't so well developed and that uh, uh, that wasn't happening anymore, that people weren't being hurt by dentists, but been doing this for 40 years, folks, and I'm still hearing these stories. And what, what upsets me the most is this fact that um, millennials were found to be the most afraid to go to the dentist. And, you know, uh, millennials, by the way, are people that are age, let's see, I, I found it, people that are age uh, between, they were born between 1981 and 1994. Those are my kids. My kids are all in that range. And I'm like, I didn't hurt any of my own children. None of my children are afraid of the dentist. And so it's really upsetting and actually irritating to hear that dentistry is still doing that to people, that people aren't, the dentists aren't being careful enough, whoever it is, and they're not paying attention to patient comfort. So anyway, yeah, that's um, sadly millennials, which, is, which by the way is also known as Generation X, uh, are the most afraid of going to the dentist. Okay. Um, number five in the Becker's Dental Review was, um, or is, that the anesthetic won't work. I mean, I guess you could say that still relates to the, the, the fear of pain during the treatment, but it's a whole different category because there are times when people don't numb up as well as others, or somebody maybe takes longer to get numb and you have to wait longer, or somebody gets numb immediately but it wears off before we're done, 
So what we have to do is figure out each patient's uh, unique uniqueness and re write it down. So when they come, I'll say, okay, Joyce, you're one of the people that it takes a while for you to get numb, right? She'll say, right. And so we numb her, and I might even leave the room and come back in five, six minutes. Or John might be one of the ones that, boy, he gets numb right away, but we better work fast because it's going to wear off. So anyway, fear that the anesthetic won't work. So I'm looking at the clock, and I'm thinking what we should do is go to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day because we'll have uh, four more, one, two, three, four, oh, five more of Becker's Dental Review's list of the top ten reasons people avoid the dentist. But before we do the contest, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. Okay, and remember, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the number to call, 614-459-9769. I'll give it to you again in just a second after I've read the question. So, today we've been talking about why people avoid going to the dentist. Which age, age group of people were found to be the most afraid? Was it A, millennials, born between 1981 and 94? Was it B, Generation Xers, uh, who were born between 1965 and 1980? Or C, was it the Baby Boomers? And the Baby Boomers were born, where did I put my paper? <laughs> oh, there it is. They were born between 1946 and 1964. Okay, which group is it, A, B, or C? Millennials, um, Generation Xers, or um, Baby Boomers, okay? All right, the winner's going to receive those three. Free flowers from DeSantis Florist. The number to call is 614-459-9769. Go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Well, we reopened back on May 1st, and I'm happy to say that things are going very well. Our patients are receiving the same great care we've always provided, and we are placing a huge emphasis on infection control. In addition to face shields, like the one I've worn since 1985, and of course exam gloves, my entire team is wearing surgical gowns and caps, and we are limiting the number of patients we have in the office at a time. I'm also happy to report that there's not been a single incident of COVID-19 associated with our office. Call us at 614-262-9588. Dr. Kavicko, let's go! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko & Associates today, 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have Angela on the phone. Hey, Angela, how are you today? Nope. Hello? Hey, Angela, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling in. What is the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? 
It is a the millennials. Did you did you, would you have guessed that? No. Me neither. I wouldn't have. Me neither. That was very surprising and very upsetting. Angela, what do you do for a living? I'm a substitute teacher. Oh wow. Oh, the kids aren't very nice to substitute teachers. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> you don't take it personally, apparently. So hey, Angela, no. stay. <laughs> good thing, right? Uh, you know you're yeah. doing a good job. They just uh, try to take advantage. Anyway, stay on the line, please. We need to get the information where to send you those flowers, okay? Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right, so if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 669 of The Reasons We Smile. We're talking today about reasons that uh, people avoid going to the dentist. Most of the information so far has come from De Becker's Dental Review, other than what I've added on my own uh, from my experience. But we're up to number six, which is dental instruments. So apparently, just plain dental instruments are scary to people, and I hadn't thought of that either. Um, one of the other lists that I looked at went into the details about, you know, how maybe we'll read that later, but yeah, I guess... When we come at people with sharp, pointy, picky things, right? Things that are spinning and making a whirring sound or uh, different contraptions that maybe you've never seen before, that can be scary. Another one would be uh, uh, somebody who gags easily or just plain is afraid they're going to gag if we have all that stuff. Because you see all these pictures, these scary pictures, right, of dentists shoving cotton in people's mouths and gauze and stuff. And that actually, if you're a gagger, that looks like it might gag you. So I hadn't thought of that one. Uh, obviously, we do have gaggers, and we know how to work around it. Um, once a person is numb, especially if their both sides of their tongue is numb and the roof of their mouth is numb, they don't gag. So if you're a gagger and you're listening and you've been avoiding going to the dentist because you're afraid of that, well, I can tell you that if you come to me, I can work around your gagging uh, by doing that. So we would do the best we could to do an exam without you numb, you know, on day one. But then what we would do is kind of, we would see a cavity or two and we'd say, I tell you what, while you're here to fix those, let's go ahead and uh, finish our exam, maybe even finish our x-rays in a way that it won't make you gag. I've even had people in just for their x-rays and numb them knowing that they were a gagger. And we got maybe the first set of x-rays, a full series of x-rays that they've ever had in their life um, that could be read sometimes ever. Another one, number eight, would be being afraid, afraid of being poked with a sharp object. I guess I kind of uh, put that in the category of the dental instruments, but maybe it's different because the dental instruments just look scary. This one is we come at you with pointy things that can actually poke you, and you're afraid we're probably going to, you know, or probably afraid that we might slip, right? Might poke you in the cheek, poke you in the tongue. Um, don't think anybody's afraid we're going to poke you in the eye or anything, but I hope. <laughs> but being poked with a sharp object... <laughs> Okay, number nine is the feelings of helplessness. I get this one. I actually uh, have that one myself. And so, um, you know how most dental offices have music playing or something playing, whether it's TV or music? Uh, my dentist, as I was growing up, had the radio playing. And I would always, uh, especially when he would use nitrous oxide, otherwise known as laughing gas, I would tap my finger in, on the chair the arm of the chair, to the music so that I knew I was still in control a little bit. I knew that I still had my faculties about me, even though I was. it felt like I was you know, in a tunnel. Uh, it really did. You're pretty much out of it, but you're also aware. It's kind of weird. People that have had it will know what I'm talking about. But giving up that power, giving up that there's something very making you very vulnerable when you lay back in a chair and open your mouth... Um, and some of that is because we explore the world through our mouth when we're infants. You know, and if you, if I were to ask, I've done this just for fun. I've done this uh, when I was giving talks to kids. I would have somebody come up to the front with me, and I'd say, okay, now I want you to open your mouth really wide and have them face their class classmates. And I'd say, and stay that way. Nobody can do it for more than just a few seconds because they feel like everybody can see everything about them. You know, it's like, you know all my secrets because my mouth is open. <laughs> And uh, you can't see anything but, you know, the tonsillar pillars, your tongue, and a few teeth. But you really do feel vulnerable when you open your mouth wide and keep it that way. The other one would be, or the number 10, according to Becker's Dental Review, is embarrassment due to oral hygiene. And I guess this is what we're talking about with the millennials, where we 
we read that, um, according to Becker's review, millennials were found to be the most afraid to go to the dentist. And guess what? They, um, they, the average person, after surveying 2,000 of them, had gone more than two days without brushing their teeth. So, of course, you're going to feel like we're going to admonish you for not brushing. I try not to ever make it feel like somebody's being admonished. I'll just say something like, so, you know, if you brush your teeth this morning, you're missing some places. I had this happen this week also. A gentleman came in, and I said, he wasn't there for a cleaning. He was there for uh, some swelling in his lower left neck area. And and so I said to him, I said, uh, by the way, I'm assuming you brushed your teeth this morning, and if you did, I want you to show you, I want to show you where you're missing because there was plaque everywhere. He goes, oh, no, I didn't brush him this morning. And this is a guy that's, uh, I think he's like a professional, like an attorney or a doctor or an accountant, you know, shirt and tie on, <clears throat> dressed for work. I was really amazed. I was taken aback. I would never leave the house without brushing my teeth. In fact, uh, the only people that do that I know of get this are my dental assistants and my hygienists. They leave their house without brushing their teeth. Why? Because after our morning meeting, they all go and brush their teeth at the office. <laughs> they want to have the... Uh, Freshest, freshest mouth they can, the best breath they can, even in the advent of these masks. So I think that's a little bit funny. I brush mine at home. <laughs> but if I happen to have a snack or something at, at work, I have a toothbrush right there in my office. And guess what? I use it. And some people say, well, I can't brush my teeth at work. Yes, you can. Every, every place of business has to have a restroom with a functioning sink or they can't be open. And so guess what? You can brush your teeth in that sink or at that sink. Anyway, okay, so that's Becker's Dental Review's list of 10. When we come back, we're going to do, we've got more than I could probably have time for, but the next one, there's one from called Dr. Dental. There's one from, um, what is this one from? It's from Dental Brothers Team, and uh, there's just some several ones out there. I may not get to them all. All right, so you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, and we'll be right back. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> Okay, we're back. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 669 of The Reasons We Smile. Thank you so much for joining me. We're talking about uh, why people avoid going to the dentist, especially millennials. This next list is from CNE Dental. I don't know what that is. I think it might be a dental office. But anyway, I want to give props to the people who did the research and not steal anybody's stuff, right? One of the things I learned in college, never plagiarize, right? Okay, so... Um, this one starts off by saying, for as many jokes as there are about the dentist, it's really not a scary place. I agree with that. The fear that is present in our minds even before we enter the office has no reason to be there. Modern medicine ensures that treatments are generally painless, so what else is there to worry about? In this article, they're going to talk about the top reasons why people try to avoid the dentist, and of course, why you shouldn't is something that I've already been telling you. So... Um, uh, the, the thing that I was looking here is that, or wait a minute, one of these was talking about, here it is, this one's from Dr. Dental, I got, I got uh, ahead of myself. This one I hadn't thought about. This one's called Checkered Dental History. 
So, it could be that you've had a particularly painful experience, or maybe a family member's root canal went spectacularly wrong. See, that's one I hadn't thought about. Somebody else's bad experience. That one, that's, I mean, that doesn't even make sense in one sense to me because you should, like, see for yourself. It's almost like, say, here, taste this. It tastes good. And people will not want to taste it because it doesn't look good to them, right? Or, like, so-and-so hates green pepper, so I'm not going to try the green pepper. So I guess I get it. But so another one, if you want to add to that 10, would be someone else's bad experience is a reason why people might avoid the dentist. Um, okay, so this one's more common than we realize, especially considering that personal experience isn't the deciding factor with this phobia. Phobia. So, you know, it all, all it takes is a so-called horror story from a dental office, and, and I'm, where you tell your friends, right? So here, you're at work, one of your coworkers says, uh, oh, I'm going in to get a root canal tomorrow, and they go, and this is the person, they're supposedly your friend, right? And they say, oh, let me tell you how bad it was when I got mine. And I'm thinking, if you're their friend and you had a bad experience, you should not say a word. If you're their friend and you had a good experience, you would want to say something like, oh, hey, it's going to be a piece of cake. It was nothing. Don't worry about it at all. But if you had the bad experience, maybe do your friend a favor and keep that to yourself and let them see how it goes for them. Because maybe you either had a particularly tough tooth or you're one of the people where the numbness wears off too quick or you had a particularly bad um, dental experience where, I don't know, maybe the dentist was having a bad day. You just don't know. It's not going to be like that. Um, it may not be like that for you and probably won't. Okay? So here's another one that we could call number 12. And this one's from Dr. Dental. Sensory onslaught. Harsh noises, weird-looking instruments. That thing's going in my mouth. For many people, a visit to the dentist prevents t presents too many sights and sounds that they'd rather skip. So it's not that any one is a big deal, but all of them at once is a big deal. You know, you're dealing with the sounds, you're dealing with the sights, you're dealing with the smells in a lot of cases, because when we cut on a tooth, it has a certain odor. So, um, yeah, you've got the scraping, you've got uh, uh, the intimidating instruments, and no one of them is really bad to make you stay away, but putting them all together can. Now, we do at our office, and a lot of offices do this, this these days, we have the televisions, we have music if you want it, we have headphones, we have whatever you might need to try to help you get through that, okay? Now, another one is breathing issues, and I hadn't thought of this one either until I did the research. What they mean is there are certain people, that if you, you probably can recognize them, pe people that have like these big necks, like uh, maybe somebody's a little bit overweight. You notice how there are two different kinds of overweight people. There are the ones where they carry all their weight down in their belly, and there are ones that carry all their weight up in their uh, like shoulder and neck and chest area. Well, those people, they're already struggling with breathing. They probably snore. They may have sleep apnea. And so we put them in a dental chair, ask them to open and recline them back, and they immediately are having a little bit trouble breathing. So some of those folks, we have to do with them almost sitting upright. But it is and has become one of those fears that people say, well, that's why I don't go to the dentist. Uh, I will say that... Um, Nitrous oxide does actually soothe the bronchioles, and so that is probably a good thing to use on somebody like this that has trouble with breathing or is afraid they're not going to be able to breathe, that they're going to suffocate. And, you know, we need to know who those people are, and of course, like I said, you can kind of spot them when they first walk in. We have this thing we can do. It's called the Malum Paddy score, where we have a person open their mouth, and we look in there, and if you can't see the hole... Well, they're probably a snorer. They're probably, they probably have sleep apnea. If they open up their mouth and you can see the, the, the hole all the way into the oral pharynx, then that means their airway is nice and big, and they probably don't snore and probably wouldn't be one of the folks that would be anxious about um, not being able to breathe in the dental chair. So anyway, we didn't really get to all of these, but we're getting the idea, you know, um, something that happened when you were a child, all kinds of things. And maybe we'll have another show down the road where we talk about the ones that I wasn't able to get to today. Okay, so again, let me just say congratulations to soon-to-be President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. It's historic. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to everybody coming together, the people that didn't vote for him as well as those who did, and that we can maybe uh, just like move forward in a positive, positive way. It's going to be awesome, actually. I really think it is. So, all right, looks like that's all the time I have. Am I right, producer? <laughs>
got the thumbs up and I'll get the thumbs down if I keep talking. Okay, that's all the time we have today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or send an email to speaking at the reasons we smile.com. Broadcasting from the Byers Dublin Mazda Subaru Studios. Under the big windmill. WSNY, WSNY HD2.